Hey, just uh, yeah. Wait for this to spool up. Hey, Bobby. I'm just gonna give this a minute to uh, spool up and uh, see if uh, anyone decides to uh, tune in tonight. We didn't have any racing, but um, I did. Uh, some of you may know that um, I recently got on TikTok and I've been getting all of these questions on TikTok about various things. And so I would kind of, I thought I would uh, cover a couple of things that, um, well, we're spooling up here. Hey, Jason. Happy Monday, Brian, to you and Nate. Um, so anyway, I got my organize, organized sheet here. Hey, Rick and Jeff. Um, the fastest pier stock driver in the world is tuning in, Jeff DeBuck. Um, and um, so I'm at the uh, shop here. All right, I'm gonna kick into it because um, I'm kind of tired, it was a long day. Um, I wear a lot of different hats, sometimes in a day. And so, um, so anyway, we are in the shop. We're working on a, if you can see it here, I got some alum here and there. And we are gonna build for the race trailer since we're kind of on a race organization kick. We're building an alum rolling tire rack that we're going to uh, quick pin into the race trailer because I would like to not grind tires and try just after the race, power spraying them and seeing if that will get it done. Uh, Dylan, someday you can be the second fastest pier stock driver in the nation. But, uh, anyway, uh, but um, I'm sure of it. So. Uh, so anyway, we're going to do that. That's a little, um, I like uh, the ideal of having a rolling tire rack so you can roll it in and out of the trailer, which I'll go in there real quick and show you. Um, another little thing I've been working on, if you see that, that is a shocker air hitch. And I wanted to see what one looked like in a black urethane coating. Um, and so we did one up with a black urethane coating. And I use that since I started racing I've always had a uh, shocker hitch and it makes for really smooth I can literally leave this cup of coffee on the dash or the workbench of my race trailer and um, when I get to the track or get home because sometimes I forget it in the trailer when we're loading up and it will still be there unspilled it's so smooth but anyway um, thank you on the hitch like I said, um, it's all black, so you don't get that chakra red. And I was just prototyping it because obviously I think a black urethane coating might last uh, years longer than uh, a powder coated coating. But uh, anyway, it's just a little test. Um, so I get a lot of questions on my shock racks and I'll show you in the trailer, which by the way, we have a special guest race car in the shop. Um, the old Bob Sagan, Super Sagan, Super, super uh, race car there is in the corner and we are gonna make that thing look badass for Bob because he's gonna come out of, he hasn't driven a race car in a year or maybe a little more and he's gonna run the Rebel Midwest Modified Tour as a Wasoda car. So that's one more Wasoda driver uh, Wasoda is getting for the Rebel Midwest Modified Tour and he's gonna run that car and we're gonna put a kick-ass wrap on it for him so um if he's not fast he'll gonna look fast so anyway um on these so i got these clamps they're called snap clamps and i got them get them in various sizes the um and you can get them pretty cheap from this company here if you can read that uh, logo it's probably backwards but it's circo innovations they're in green valley california and they make them from half inch to two inches the two inch ones um, I use for my power tools. So hold on a second. If you 
you have a power tool like this here, they just slide right in there and then you can just pop rivet those onto somewhere or whatever and it'll fit right in there and hang and it'll stay there. Uh, they also work for shock racks. And the inch and a half size here is what I use for shock racks. Oh, this one would be for drive shafts if I got discombobulated there. And hey, Darren, um, the inch and a half one uh, works for shocks and uh, the inch, you got an inch and a quarter and half inch, blah, blah, blah. You can use them for brooms and whatnot. The, uh, I use them for, I'll put Velcro on them like this and I'll hang my bumpers in the race trailer on them, which I'll show you in a little bit. But um, let's see here, I had on my notepad. Hi, Richard, hi, Dylan again, and Nick. Um, oh, this weekend we are gonna go, we're gonna try to go to, the, the, there's no rain in the forecast, but it's kind of cold. It's like highs in the 50s, but we're gonna try to race the three-day show at Cedar Lake. There's three days show in Cedar Lake, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the plan. We're meeting here at 8 a.m. and loading up, and it's gonna be me and Rusty Coleman going. He's going to be driving. This is a USRA car, and you can kind of tell it's a USRA car because it has the um, two inch, uh, I usually run a plastic nose, you can see that, but it's got a two inch uh, spoiler on the nose, which you can do in USRA, uh, but you have to have the body sucked in and it's got a quick change in it. And we did put a new Dakota Engine Builders uh, spec motor in it. So it's supposed to have lots of snort. Uh, which what we ran at Humboldt in the car was a soda motor. So they're not quite as strong as a true USRA motor. And then I'm going to drive my Wasoda uh, Midwest Modified, uh, which is also the car I'll race on the Wasoda Midwest Modified Rebel Tour, which um, is a concept motor. And of course, there's uh, Bob's hot rod there. Uh, he's running a 602 crate. So it's got a four inch spoiler on it. Not that you wanted all that stuff. Um, I don't know if I have any speed secrets, um, Shannon, and you don't usually listen to anyone else besides yourself. So it's hard to give you speed secrets because you might not believe their speed secrets, um, but you might. Um, anyway, um, so I'm gonna run out to the race trailer with you. It's cold outside today. So I might be shaking and the camera might be new in this, but I'll just show you a couple of things we did in the trailer. And then I'm gonna call it good because um, that seems like uh, enough of me yipping. Um, oh, a couple of things here. We did get a organizer there for the right side entry of the race trailer. And then we have to cut in a floor mount winch box that we got and a uh, nylon rope winch. Those are kind of nice for race trailers because you don't get all the little wire splinters on them. Hey, Rusty. Um, well, no, speed secrets aren't necessarily the same as um, cheating. I suppose in some camps they could be, but um, the, uh, for example, okay, I'll give you a speed secret. If you look under here, Right here under this race car. I'm gonna to try to do it in a manner that I don't show you the trick suspension we got. But you see this tarp? This is a tarp that we've just got pop riveted in there. And what happens is it flaps, right? And so when mud comes up, it knocks the dirt off of the car. And so if you're in a hammer down heavy heat, you're not gonna have any mud stick to the rear of the car, which will thus make you faster. So that is a speed secret. I suppose, or, and the tarp costs like six bucks and you can, uh, you do have to kind of, okay. Hopefully, um, hopefully the internet coverage will work while I get to the trailer here. So we're gonna see if it will do that or if you're gonna push me. <clears throat> so we're boogie into the trailer. Hopefully there's enough light in this thing. This is a new trailer. I got it at James Coda in Jamestown, new trailer dealership. And um, if you see there in the back, 
We have a TPO lift. It's a 50 pound aluminum car lift and it's pretty trick, but we hang it on the back door with quick pins. So it's right there uh, and it's convenient and handy. Um, we've got some Velcroed in clips for spare body and those bumpers, those, uh, if you look here on the bumpers, I just put those snap clamps on it and I have a carpet wall so I connect. I just literally um, stick the bumper to the carpet via the Velcro. Um, here's those shock racks I was telling you about and the tool racks that we put in there. Uh, and we're also, uh, we got a generator that we're putting in here because when you get a new race trailer, sometimes they don't come with the generator. So we're literally, this one was kind of, um, didn't have a lot of, of the things that a racer would have, like a generator and an air compressor. Although I think for our air compressor, we're not going to put a traditional one in. We're going to try to use this Milwaukee one with a, it's light enough and it works off of a Milwaukee battery. So rather than doing all the plumbing to, do, to air up the trailer, we're just gonna try to use that little thing and see how that goes. Um, the, this here, um, when I was up at Millennium Chassis, I did the measurements on a fuel jug and um, Dustin bent that up for me in about 10 minutes to hold fuel jugs and we of course velcroed that to the wall uh you'd think i had worked at agricover or something when i was a young man maybe um with all the little velcro and tarp tricks but uh which i did um and on the bigger impacts we just we have them hanging with uh these you can just get from home depot or whatever or menards or whatever or a hardware store and they're about a buck 50 for that mount and they just will hang right in there. And of course, that is where I'm gonna put the rolling tire rack here. And we also discovered in the cabinet, there's dead space, the generator box goes in there. So uh, you can't really see it, but there's a generator box, but it's not all used. So we're gonna cut that out and make it a cubby hole for storage. Um, and uh, hey, Nathan, um, so if you do want like a fuel jug holder for your race trailer, uh, you can probably get a hold of Dustin and he could hook you up in lickety split like he did with me perhaps, although he is bu busy building uh, race cars. Oh, we also in here um, is the compartment. And so we just took we're gonna put bins in here. So we're just gonna mount one of these in here so we can hang bins because you kind of have a winter jacket and a race suit and stuff like that. And so we're gonna put some other stuff in there. Um, and uh, let's see here. There, there's probably some other things, but I lost my train of thought and I'm confused. Oh, we uh, mounted these into the floor of the trailer. Um, which to hold the front of the tires. Um, there's a few different uh, styles, but that's the ones we went with was the Ericsson ones. And um, so it's pretty quick to fasten the car in here. And we tried to maximize the space because what's gonna fit in here is a little four wheeler that'll fit there. And of course, we're probably gonna do a quick strap for my electric bike. So, uh, because I kinda, like driving that more than a four-wheeler, but you can't take people on it, so it's not as fun. Um, anyways, I hope that we go to uh, Cedar Lake because uh, I'm itching to race. We did a little tweaking on the cars, and hopefully they're a little bit faster or the driver's a little bit faster. Um, and on the Rebel Tour, uh, we'll talk about it more, but we did get a... If you're a rookie Midwest Mod driver and you're a little nervous about running the tour because you think there's going to be all these fast, you know, drivers running it, which there will be, but there is a $500 um, cash for the rookie who runs the tour 
with the highest points. So that was a good addition. Um, and there's more that'll be announced tomorrow, but that was the uh, big thing there. And do appreciate all the support on that. If you are a Midwest Mod driver and happen to be watching this uh, for the uh, Rebel Midwest Modified Tour, there is a driver-only group you can join that kind of gives you some behind-the-scenes things. And lastly, if you've... The hot Carl Midwest Mod thing is totally a joke. It was totally... A joke. I did not drop a Midwest or a modified off at Carl's and blah, 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 blah. But we've just haven't been having fun going back and forth a little bit because he's a hoot. And um, yeah, so, and I'm a nut. So you got a hoot and a nut. So that's all there is uh, to it. And I thank you for all turning in. And hopefully next weekend, if if we do this, um, I'll have some racing action to report and uh, give you some blow-by-blows and all of that kind of stuff. And that's all I got. That's it. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, can you drop your trailer here in Dallas, Texas? You know, I was going to go... Uh, long story, I'm not going to get into it, but no, probably not. Not going to drop it in Texas. Uh, but when we are finally all done with tricking the trailer out, um, I will, oh, I will send you a, I don't know what the guy, the, Kenny is really organized, so he's like one of those people that puts everything away. So, um, but we did get the generator in. It came in this pallet, Kenny and I, and the truck driver had to lift it off. Um, but I don't know where Kenny put it. So, but I'm pretty confident that do you guys want to see what's in my storage units okay um this is so this is one this was kind of we were doing swag videos here so there's a welder there and this is kind of a got some rolling carts and some tunnel covers and my broken down electric bike and some generators um and a kayak uh that my wife won at the michelson wedding um, here in this room here is a parts room. It's got tires in it and uh, spare parts and bumpers and those blessed nine inch gears. Here's a uh, plate we did for a rear end when we don't have um, when we don't have a J bar or gears in it to get it pushed around. But anyway, these are all tires. Those are my pier stock. Come pick them up. Driver set of tires that. Uh, the Pier Scott, local Pier Scott guys can come and get. I think Joe Jacobson has dibs on the ones that are there. Um, and in this room here, it's kind of a mess. But it's all of the tin. So I got tin from here, from Michelson. And I just haven't hung it up yet. And it's kind of a mess. Some old roofs and noses and stuff like that. And... Um, yeah, that's what's in those things. Anyway, kind of messy, but that's how it is. Um, where's all... Well, one of the, the big mills... I don't know what big mills are. Um, hey, Josh. Um, big mills. Where are all the big mills? Like Mills Fleet and Farm? We don't have that in Jamestown. Anyway... Um, that's it you guys have a good week and uh, let's be great to each other and um, I'm going to try to do something tomorrow to blow someone's mind just because and oh where's all the big motors well uh, the one that broke the distributors at Dakota uh, going through and the other ones we have are in the cars and um other than that, I don't have any big motors. Um, and the uh, Millennium is back at Millennium Chassis, the one we ran at Bristol, because uh, Dustin is converting that to a Wasoda car for me, unless we decide to turn that into an IMCA mod with the 604 modified crate motor that I just bought from my friend Jason Grimes 
since he's not going to be running IMCA. Hint, hint, wink, wink. wink. So um, you saw that today, did you? Um, anyway, uh, so yes, that's right. Dylan, you were up there at Bethlehem, the Bethlehem of uh, North Dakota for race car manufacturing. I guess technically they're in Minnesota now, but anyway. Um, so yes, we're going to probably put a 604 mod in that Millennium and do, do a little IMCA modified testing on a suspension package that I can drive that's not um, overly complicated and require a bunch of trail braking and weird stuff in the race car. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry, I keep saying I'm going to end this and I don't end this, but... Um, Oh the, oh, the Millennium guys run, or the USRA guys run mills. Gotcha. Okay, so um, I'm going to put the hammer down. And uh, yeah, we may run the Dakota Mod Tour. We'll see. We're probably going to uh, test that IMCA mod a little bit to see if I can stay on the same lap as everybody else. And if we can, we might run that tour. But our main priority is to have fun. Our second priority is we're going to run the Rebel Midwest Modified Tour and try to have some fun and uh, really knock that out of the park. And then um, that leaves July open. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you again soon.